the webinar is running, the recording is running. So hello everyone, this is Lubos Pirkel from CFD Support and I would like to welcome you to the webinar. Uh, this window is the one I didn't want to see, okay. And okay, so I would like to welcome you to the webinar about centrifugal compressor simulation, uh, about CFD, FEA and FSI. And this webinar is especially interesting for us and we hope it's also interesting for you because it's a benchmark. We, ha we have very, very good uh, measurements uh, and our simulation results, uh, CFD results can be compared to this measurement and it gives us much more total picture of, of what we have and what's, what's on the table. So welcome <clears throat> and uh, uh, let's see, let's see what, we, what, what we can do and what we can show uh the webinar is being recorded and the recording will be later made publicly available so feel free to make yourself comfortable and you can ask your questions that's that's very important uh, ask ask questions uh, anytime during the webinar and in the latest part uh, at, at the at the end of the webinar we, we will we will answer your questions we will answer all the all the relevant and representative questions and all the questions will be answered the the rest of the questions, uh, which we will not make today, we will we will we will answer them later via email. So free, feel free to ask your questions. Use your time to the fullest. It's it's your time. We are here for you, and we'll do our best to 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 show you and 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 do really show uh, uh, everything we can. Okay, so let's get let's get to it. Let's get to the action. Um, uh, yeah. So first of all, I'll introduce the webinar speakers. So this will be me. Uh, I am I am kind of coordinator here at CFD Support. So I'm, I'm, um, I help uh, things running well. And today I am here with my colleague Radek Matsa, who is the head engineer and senior developer and really a golden boy of our company who, who makes everything. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's actually the guy who makes <laughs> makes things run. Uh, Radek, hello. Yeah, hello Lubosh and hello to the audience. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. So it seems everything is working and it seems yes. that we are ready to to go ahead. Uh, what's what's new Radek? What's what's up? Well, yeah, time goes very quickly. Yeah. The last two years are, right. are gone, right? right. right like <laughs> yes, yes, we, we're living. Yeah, very yeah. We, we have also one month to to the new release, right? So right, right now we are really in the stress and hectic mode, right? Yes, yes, yes. We are enjoying so much all the, all the tests <laughs> and and pack tracking and uh, repeating all everything. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. But but in, in in one almost exactly in one month there will be new version out and we are so much looking forward to it and indeed <laughs> i'm sorry we are living in a very dynamic in a very dynamic times and because time is running quickly we will go ahead in with our webinar okay so <laughs> let's let's <laughs> make it let's make it happen uh, quickly the agenda there will be a quick introduction from me and i I promise it will be really quick. No, I'm not going to torture you too much with the details. Then there will be a live example how how it works in the in, in the software, and in the latest part there will be the as as mentioned uh, the Q and A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions. We will do our best to answer all of them, and and we will pick the the most most representative questions uh, right here uh, in in the, in the webinar. Uh, Okay, so yeah, uh, as promised, I'm not going to touch you too much. So okay. everybody, uh, yeah, Radek, sorry. And maybe I suggest switching of our cameras for the presentation sorry. and then we yes, will come yes, back. Yes, yes, uh, yes, 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 we, yes, we can. Yes, we can. So I just switched my screen. <laughs> okay, so I'm not, now I'm switching camera. Okay, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope you I hope you can see my screen and let's, let's go ahead. Thanks, Radek. Um, yeah, so not so many details so all the important information can can be found pretty everywhere anyway so the company is called cfd support located in prague uh, 
what's important uh, our, our mission here at CFD support is creating a comprehensive simulation environment built on open sources that's very important so TCAE is a simulation environment which consists of out of uh, software modules that, that that can create a simulation workflow according to, to the purpose of, of, of its users. So it's extremely flexible. It's it's uh, it it has strong integration ability. It can be integrated to existing processes or create new processes. It's you can play it. Uh, it's very very flexible and customizable. It's definitely ready because we, we are doing it for years and 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 it's based on open source and uh, it's a really uh, big added value from us because we make it ready for for the for the for the for the industry one of the biggest uh, benefits of TCAE is it, there are no limitations of on number of users there are no limitations on on job scores and hardware installations and for this reason uh, TCAE allows its users to scale the resources to the fullest uh, in, in terms of users, hardware, clouds, clusters, and everything. So it enables really, really big things. Um, another big benefit is it's accurate. We, we always measure the accuracy. It's, it's, the TCAE is, is focused on particular applications. It's not a general purpose code for everything. It's focused on turbo machinery and external aerodynamics at, it, that allows us to be accurate, not general purpose on everything, but really, really we are obsessed with accuracy and it allows us to be accurate. And we, we believe, we deeply believe that the good projects, su successful projects are a matter of skills, experience, patience and dedication and not random quick actions. And uh, another important uh, point is is benchmarking, measuring the accuracy, and always always ha having the feedback from 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 the from the nature and from from the reality. That's that's what we what we what we always look for. So yeah, TCA is also automated, so it's up to the user if it's gonna be used as a let's say black box or all the details will be resolved to the to the fullest it's up to the users and as already mentioned uh, our our one of our missions is really to, to prove it's accurate it works so over the years we are creating a lot of benchmarks by by the word benchmark we mean we usually um, pick up uh, some some nice cases where the measurements like professional measurements are available and we do the simulation and then we then we measure the, the accuracy between between those simulation data and measurement me measurements data so we did a lot of benchmarks in the past some of them are publicly available because we were allowed to to publish them or they were they, they were published already so over the time we are we keep creating new and new benchmarks and new and new best practices to show our users it's a reliable software with uh, enough credibility and uh, when used properly it gives uh, accurate results and uh, today we are here with this benchmark it's actually pretty new it's a high efficiency centrifugal compressor. So that's why it's HECC stage. So once again, high efficiency centrifugal compressor stage uh, benchmark, which was extensively measured in NASA laboratories. By the way, on our website, you can, you can find uh, a little, little case study where, where you, you can see even more details than, than we, will, we will make to mention in today's uh, webinar so the details are definitely available and there are also there is also lit there are articles and literature and there is always uh, i mean there, there's a lot of information about this case so it has been measured and we we know pretty lot about it and when i go back to my presentation it allows us to simulate it analyze it like virtually and then compare the measurements data with, with the simulations uh, simulation results that's that's the point of this of this effort 
so yeah so like a year ago we were contacted by one of our clients tony jones from from united states and he he recommended us this benchmark because benchmark because he's he he knew it already and he, he recommended it because it's like complex enough the data are data is available really 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 good representative benchmark for compressible flow of quite some pressure ratio like about five so good centrifugal compressor for for jets jet engines uh it's it's part of jet engines so so it's a real, real existing mesh that has been extensively measured. That's my point. So let's take a look at it a little bit more in detail. Um, another news I, I wanted to show you is that, that there will be definitely the new version, uh, which will be a really big, big thing. Uh, so in November, in November 9, this year, so in, in one month, we will release the new version of TCAE. It will be 22.10. And it will be a relatively big thing for us because we, we made we, we we have undergone a complex code redesign, which was which was a, a nightmare for for developers, but but we finally made it. It's it besides the complex complex code redesign, it includes more than 200 resolved issues like bugs and new features altogether. And there, are, there is a lot of new things. There will be completely new project management, uh, working with the results, working with the project. There will be comple completely new user experience. Uh, there will be new software module, TCAA, which is aimed on aeroacoustics. So we, we, we've gone quite quite deep in the rabbit hole to, to, to figure out how to, how to simulate acoustics. Uh, for proper propellers and and fans and, and all the, all these all these rotating machinery of course and other other machinery and and uh, everything so aeroacoustics will be will be like the face of 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 the new release there will be a, a lot of a lot of work has been done and there are a lot of new other things like new optimization method called direct which is very much effective for 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 large uh, for large uh, uh, parametric spaces and or there will be new let's say enhanced graphical interface and also support for client server simulations for for servers and clouds there will be new paraview there will be faster simulation there i mean installation process there will be new tutorials and benchmarks and everything so you can look for it for the new version uh, that's my point and we're already starting working on the next version which will be released next year but but this is not what i wanted to talk about today my uh, one of my latest points in in this interaction view is yes there will be a new version the today's example will be shown in the new version but today's webinar is not about the new version today's webinar is about uh, the, the centrifugal compressor so 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 enjoy the the centrifugal compressor but but the new version will be introduced uh, in in one month so so let's let's concentrate all of us uh, on the on the centrifugal compressor and how it's how it's been validated and and uh, benchmarked with 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 the measurement data and and it will be yes it will be in the new version but uh, the new version topic will be will be solved uh, a little bit later uh, okay so this has been it from the from from the first part of the webinar and now radek hello hello still still with us yes 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 i'm still here <laughs> That's perfect. So I'm about to hand over, over the presentation over to you. So okay, great. So I think you can see yes, my desktop can now. See nice okay. W you have BMW <laughs> motorbike. Oh, yeah. So and uh, yeah, so the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Bosch. And I will di directly dive into the into the life example. So first of all, what we have, so maybe I will first introduce the input data. So what, what we have as an input data, we have the STLs which will be which will use for the creating of the mesh. So in, in this benchmark, we decided to take only the only the tools which TCAE provides. So for meshing, although the SnapX mesh has a 
has not a great reputa reputation even for meshing axial machine and as the segments. So we try to show that even SnapPX mesh can give really good results. So, so we will be using SnapPX mesh for mesh generation. So as the input, we have the segment geometry of our machine as Lubos already introduced in his part. So I will just quickly say open open the STLs we have. Okay, so this this is what we have here. Let me just open all of them. So all of the STLs and what what we got what we get is is the input data for our for our case for our benchmark. So I will just show you from how many parts it it is it is built. So SnapX mesh needs for for definition of each patch, which will be in the in the final computational mesh, we need a separate STL and all the parts of the domain should be built as a waterproof waterproof geometry. Yeah, so the STLs basically has to has to define the waterproof geometry and has to be split into the meaningful parts like inlets, outlets, interfaces, hub shrouds and blades basically. And each of these STL will be taken and used for the for the meshing. So I will go back to TCAE. So this is kind of development version, beta version of, of the new release. All the principles are remain the same. I will not go over each new feature. So I will just show the the workflow for in, in the in the new version. So I will I will start from the from the scratch, but then I will jump to the preset preset case because if I start from the very beginning and setting up and waiting for the mesh generation, we will need maybe two at least two hours to to do it really from from a scratch. Okay, so first here we we create a new project. So we switch from the simple file file like cases to the project like so each new simulation is is a new project from the dca point of view so here i will create a new project we kept some some legacy legacy loading so you can load here also the older version using the configuration files and i think of the from everything from the new features will be explained in the in the in the one month as also Lubos uh, Lubos Lubos said. Okay, so now I will create a new project from scratch, and we directly start with the with the Tmesh module, and maybe we will preset let's say the first component from the from the whole geometry, and then I will switch, and then I will switch to the preset case. Okay, so here in the component now we can import our surface geometry or the volumetric mesh for the external meshes but now we'll be using snappy hex mesh for mesh generation so i will import new surface geometry okay so i will locate our case for today here's my input geometry folder and the first component for this whole for this whole geometry is the inlet in like duct let's say and so I can pick which STL which I want to use for the for the new component. So I will pick them directly. I can see them in the in the graphical user interface. And now we can set our standard standard procedure for the meshing. So component name. So I can I can set my own name as inlet, reference frame, static or rotating. This part is just the inlet stator, so I can keep it as the static part. Then I need to preset the the type of the type of the boundaries. Maybe I switch one important one important item is for because this is the segment geometry, not the full wheel geometry. So we need to say to the measure that this must be treated as a as a segment geometry. 
and number of periodic segments here corresponds to the number of uh, rotor blades it means the one section includes the, the rotor blade and the, and the splitter blade yeah so in in this case we have 15 15 segments and then we pre preset the type of the boundary so it's pretty simple so induct exit is the outlet interface but because i don't want to create the whole geometry so for now it will be just the outlet uh induct inlet is the inlet i can again double click just to check which part i am setting right now then we have shroud so we have a specific type to assign shroud to the shroud and hub to the hub so in this way again i can double click to see it that this bar induct hub is really really the hub and then here we have two periodicities left and right let's say and this these must be set as a rotation AMI to be connected via arbitrary mesh interface connection. So it, it creates for us the mapping between, periodic mapping be, between these two faces. And to connect them, I need to just click the right, right button on my mouse and connect it to the neighbor. So now these two periodicities are connected well and, and the TCA will so say the will tell the solver how or the measure how to treat meshing on these on these parts then we need to create a background mesh size or background mesh for for mesh generation so first i need to set some meaningful sizing now i'm not sure so let let's start with some rough rough meshing so this is for example 0 0.1 one uh, meters on and okay and in this way and we need to also set the internal point to distinguish which part to be which part should be meshed inside or outside so for this purpose i can for example go for this cfd and i i can make a visualization to look inside to see what is inside of my geometry and now i can place the internal point to the point where, where it should be which which means it must be in inside our component okay this is fine what we can also do is a little more play with the with the alignment of the of the of the mesh just to improve some quality so we can for example rotate the mesh in the proper way to be for example properly aligned with our with our background mesh or with our position of the component yeah, yeah so you can play like like this for example or even you can set a cylindrical background mesh which which in general is applicable only for some specific cases where where it is really the cylindrical background mesh make makes sense to use which is yeah which 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 is not this one <laughs> all right so there are some additional features i will i will i will explain them for setting or for presenting the setup for the next components so let's say for now i can save my setup my project somewhere so let's say as a test oh, okay sorry Ooh. test ah sorry sorry this way here and okay uh, sorry i have already test test this, this directory so for example test two okay now the project is saved i can for example click on on the check if if my setup the current setup is okay now maybe i can start to create the, the meshing which will be very very easy because i didn't set up for example for example the mesh refinement and so so this is just let's say how to show the procedure of meshing so let's see okay the mesh is already generated okay i can click show 
and here if i don't know cfd mesh surface with edges so yeah this is our <laughs> this is our very rough rough mesh without any additional features so this must be done for for each component then you need to a little bit play with the with the topology with the with, with the refinement on the part which are important adding layers and so on and then then try to simulate it and improve it to achieve achieve some kind of mesh convergence or if you if you already has have a benchmark yeah, to see how far you should go to to have a nice validated results which 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 can follow the measurements yeah. so always is some kind of iteration to achieve your goal based on the based on the input okay so so i will directly jump into the preset case so okay i will open new new GUI of TCE and I will load there I will load there the preset project so I will go here and this is yeah this is one of our simulation which which generate the results directly in the in the graphs uh, directly for for the benchmark so this is one of our final final results we presented in the in the study okay fine yeah because this is already the the simulated project so that we can also see and list the results but let's let's start for for discussing the mesh setup all right so again maybe from the beginning the rotation the rotation reference frame create the create the create or define the axis of rotation which must be set properly yeah, so here we can see that the rotation axis is x in this case and now here we have the five components which which build the the whole the whole geometry so we have the static static part here we have the rotating part the green one so the rotor part so maybe here i would like to mention some some kind of setup uh, here what is what is good to know is because this case is unshrouded and there is a nice feature which is called use gap refinement which ensure that maybe then i will show the show the mesh which ensures that the the gap gap between the blade gap and the shroud is refined is refined simply so only the part between the cap and the shroud are are refined otherwise you you need to refine for example the whole blade or the, the whole shroud which which eats a lot of lot of cells for the mesh okay maybe if i if i show the show the cfd mesh so i can go here and show the impeller for example okay so the, the resulting mesh is now loading and after it is loaded we can we can show the topology of the of the mesh on this part okay the mesh is there cfd mesh surface with edges so we can see uh, that the refinement of the between the blade blade caps and the shroud are only only refined locally and not not everywhere uh, you can even you can create a slice for example somewhere okay let's push it to the left a little bit yeah here and as you can see yeah only this part is is locally locally remeshed as you can see okay so but back to the mesh setup So definitely to get a nice mesh it is always better to use some low if possible a low low number of low level of of refinement both min, min and max because then the, all the mesh is more homogeneous there are no steps between finer mesh and 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 rougher mesh so this was our best setup which gives us the the best best results so 
we use the we use the eight boundary layers which is some kind of near the upper level of of snapx mesh applic applicability if you if you set more more layers more than 10 so usually it collapses the layers because of the some quality mesh quality issues so this is some kind of the, the maximum we can we can get from from the snapx mesh Yeah, so so as you can see, the setup is pretty pretty simple. Here only we have the parts which are physically rotating, so blades and so on are set as static. Some some parts of the geometry which are behind the rotor and are split are set as so are set as static. For example, this shroud part. Yeah, the, the shroud part is definitely static, but the static part of the hub. Is also is also set as static, so only the hub below the below the blade is set as rotating. So this allows or this allows to setting non-rotating region or non-rotating patch in the rotating region. If you go for the next component, it's just the connection kind of extension of the rotor part, and we have component with the with the diffuser vein diffuser. So this is the yellow part, and finally, finally the last last uh, guide vein uh, or guides, uh, which are which are depicted in in this purple purple color or violet. Meshing of these parts are much simpler because there are no un there, there is no unshrouding, so there are no small gaps. So so the there could be a standard refinement levels. Again, everywhere we put uh, eight levels of refinement. Oh, sorry, eight boundary layers. And as you can see, the the mesh setup is pretty kind of easy and and straightforward. Just for example, but to check the parameters of the boundary layer, which can be found in this advanced meshing options in the in the layer mesh parameters. So we use expansion ratio of 1.25 and the thickness of the final layer, layer so which is the thickness of maybe it's somewhere visible yeah 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 so for example here so this is the thickness of the final layer so this is the final layer, layer the the layer which is which is not attached to the wall so the last one and this this size is relative to the to the original cell size attached to the wall before the adding layers so it's in in this range this gives you a nice because the because the mesh is not homogeneous so for example here we have extremely small cells and here we have larger cells so we cannot or assigning the absolute cell sizing or or cell levels will be pretty complicated because it must be set properly with respect to the cell size at the wall so the relative sizing is the robust option to to properly set the boundary layers yeah, because it's then it is always adjusted to the cell size okay i think yeah this is to the this is to the boundary meshes or to the meshes of course there there were a lot of, <laughs> behind of it are hours of work because you need to really play with the mesh you need to you need to refine it running the simulation to see how it behaves and so on so so this is just the last let's say last iteration of of mesh generation which gives us pretty nice results yeah without just changing few numbers here and without any any additional effort to create for example block hexa structured meshes and so but for example for for the best results, that there will be definitely our better meshes with better topologies like these hexahedral meshes, but it will take a lot of more, lot of more time to to generate such a mesh. But maybe in the future we are planning to to have some uh, some tests on the on this type of mesh on this type of meshes maybe. For example, with, we have a cooperation with Grid Pro, so we, maybe we will try to create hexa hexa structured mesh and and compare the results to the Snappy how it how it behaves, how far it, how far 
SnapX meshes from the better results achieved on the better meshes, for example. Okay, so let's let's go for the TCFD. So when everything is done, so we can create a mesh and in our case, if we have the, the whole mesh to on which we can simulate, then we can go for setting up the CFD simulation. Okay, so now again, I am showing the the final final mesh, which is loading from the yeah from the hard disk, and here we have the the final mesh and its topology. I think it's it's around six millions of cell uh, for all for all the components. So let's go for for TCFD. I think it's a standard setup for for compressor. Yeah. So so here in general we have simulation types. So we always tailor the solution to the given application. So here one of the application is compressor. What we have in the physics, here in the time management, we, we can set how many points we would like to simulate. So basically you can simulate the whole performance map, the efficiency map and other maps <laughs> in one simulation, even though even though we can also you can also simulate more speed lines. So basically the whole benchmark can be simulated within the, within the one simulation. Yeah, but we, we run it on several nodes, on several computers. So one speed line we run on, on one computer. So we basically run for simulation for each speed line on the separate separate computers. So therefore we have a one speed line for one setup, setup file, project file. Here, point iteration. So number of iteration which is needed for to achieve the convergence. Yeah, the compressors are pretty hungry for the number of iteration from the from the point of view of the solver. Okay, so you see this was one kind of issue we are solving before the final release. So as I said, it's beta version, right? So it's not the final release, which is <laughs> which is good. So I will I will just load it again. Which was this one, yeah. And and okay, when I finish my thought, okay, let's go back here. Simulation iteration. Oh yeah, yeah. What I would like to show you is this the final report. And basically, you will see how many iterations are needed after the after the some kind of first first iteration test. Yes. Yeah, so for example, if I go for the efficiency convergence, for example. So you can see if if the average line, which is the red one, so the average solution, some kind of achieve the constant values at the end. So if you see, if you just compute, for example, for the first point, just 10,000 iterations, you will not, you will be not there. So usually, usually you you need to adjust this iteration to pretty high high number, and then when you, for example, simulate the next simulation, you you will know how many iterations are enough. Or even you can you can use some kind of automatic stopping, uh, which uh, convert can check, which is here. But for for this test case, for this benchmark, I I, I haven't applied for them. But you can also apply some convert and check. So you you say which is your tolerance for the for the final final results, and then the iterations or the simulation can stop before these maximum values are reached. For compressor, usually there are problems with the last points, which, which are near to the search line. So they are usually more wild and needs more iterations. So some kind of this setup can be said as a common setup for for the compressor, where the last points with the lowest flow rate needs more iterations because it go to the to the search search line and not stable region of of the flow. From the fluid properties point of view, we set it as a standard perfect perfect gas with standard air parameters. I think there is nothing to comment more. From the multi-physics, there is no feature to be applied for compressor. 
from the tur turbulence point of view, we use a standard K mega SST turbulence model. And here, this is the, I think, 100% one, of, of the operation operation uh, rotation speed, so which is set from the benchmark from the this compressor as, as this number. So revolutions per minute. Then a simulation, so the solver, we can uh, we can use as many as many processors as we want. For example, for our computer nodes, we have 32 processors av available. So we set as this. Numerical order is set as first for which is usually choice number one for the compressors because second order schemes usually diverge diverges or are not stable for this kind of simulation. Well, here in the runtime evaluate quantities, we can we can set what we would like to evaluate. So for example, here we have two efficiency probes, one which evaluate evaluates the quantities, integral quantities like efficiency, pressure, pressure drop, or pressure ratio for the whole geometry. And the second one measures measures the efficiency and so on and and pressure at the outlet, which is here, not not here, but here, because I think it it's it was the place of the measurement for the for the benchmark. Yeah, so so the the graphs and everything are 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 generated from the second efficiency probe, which evaluates the pressures, temperatures, and other quantities at the outlet here, which is the interface before before the 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 guide. Okay, you can also go for the forces or some probes, but we didn't measure measure that in this benchmark. In the controls, there are some advanced options for the sol for the solvers. In scripting, you can add some some user-defined modification for the for the case, some non-standard thing, for example, if if needed for some specific application or specific specific projects. Now the boundary conditions. So based on the on the measurement and, and the benchmark, we we set it. Uh, as a couple of total pressure at the inlet and uh, static average pressure at the outlet in this in this manner total temperature in 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 this in set to to constant values and fixed mean pressure at the outlet so to generate the full full mat usually we start with the lower pressure so to get higher higher flow rates first and go to the lower flow rates for the walls, we use we use standard adiabatic walls and low Reynolds wall function treatment because we have pretty fine boundary layers. So we, from the standard wall function, we need to switch to low Reynolds wall functions. Yeah, for each for for each wall, for example, of of course for each part of the uh, for the domain, the conditions at the walls are the same. For the interface condition, because because we are simulating the segments and this interface uh, is not connected properly or perfectly, so for for the, for example the connection between the first and second component we can use arbitrary mesh interface because the patches fit perfectly, but for for the interface between this veinless part let's say and and uh, and this diffuser which is this one we use the mixing plane. And for this case, seven mixing planes are used. Yeah, so the standard mixing plane or stage in CFX language is used. And for the next part, again, because there is perfect connection, we can go for AMI, which is kind of frozen rotor-like connection or point-to-point -point or face-to-face -face connection. Well, initial conditions, so some reasonable guess. And I think that's that's almost all. So we you can adjust what you can, we would like to see in the report, the units, and so on. In the turbo machine, which is not here in this case, but you can also create a blade-to-blade -blade, automatical blade-to-blade -blade views and meridional average to see what is happening in the rotor part and to see it to have some nice nice pictures of the of the pressure or or velocity distribution in this component in the in the blade to blade 
into blade blade to blade view yeah and i think some other of course some other other features can be set okay so almost 30 minutes are gone so at the end if you if you run everything you got a nice nice report which shows you it shows you the the all the all the parameters of the of the simulation yeah yeah okay, okay, okay. this is much better so we can buy f f11 you can you can show it as the full screen this html view so here are some simulation statistics so for example yeah this is the mesh mesh size so almost 6 million cells here, 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 you, here you have the statistics about the Y plus for each wall and for each point, of course, because each point has different volume, flow rates and so and, and velocities. So you can have here, here you can see some kind of bug. Uh, yes. May I, Radek, may I interrupt yeah, yeah. you? I think we can see it now. It's um, you can. We, we, Okay. Now, now, we, now there's the the mesh statistics in the in the graphic. Okay, so maybe when when I use it in yes. the full screen, it's not. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's that's the point. Uh, thank it you. Doesn't, thank uh, you for... Good to webinar doesn't doesn't take it. So so just okay, show, thank show, you. Show, show it in the GUI. Okay. Perfect. Or anytime, yeah, you can also, which is a good point to to measure to mention it. You can also find the reports on the on the disk in the as an HTML report and you can open it in your web browser, right? You can see it, right? This this should you should see. Yes, sure, sure, sure. This, yeah, this yeah. way we can see. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so all the statistics here and and all the integ integral values of efficiency, torque, axial radial forces, power, total pressure difference, total pressure ratio, and basically from these values we generated the graph, the benchmark graphs. Which I think Lubo already presented, or, or we will presenting, we will present at the end of this of this webinar. So everything can be found here. You can, of course, you can use use the results for the for the visualization. So just quickly here, you can go yeah here for the TCFD run, and here you can click the show show results so you can play with the results as you want and and post process and visualize your your results okay just i will just wait for that and meanwhile maybe Lubosh, if you have something i should i should show or i miss something important for this I case think we, i the, think we are fine i think it's just fine i'll yeah i'll if 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 you think it's it, this is it, so we can. Yeah, maybe can I will just ahead. wait for loading the data, but maybe oh, okay. we, I can I can show it during the Q and A session. Because, Later, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So I'll mm -hmm. be I'll I'll take back the the presentation. Yeah, so perfect. okay, so we are approaching to the uh, to the latest to the, to the latest part of the webinar. So. Uh, the Q and A. So please ask your questions. We'll be happy to answer them, especially those who, which are representative or they are repeating from more users. We will gladly answer it. Uh, all the answer, all the, all the questions will be answered anyway. So, so I'll ask all questions and, and we'll we'll do something about it. So ask your questions. I have two or three uh, uh, remarks. I'll I'll I w wanted to to ex like like discuss with you so first of all uh, the the case has been simulated as periodic right because it's uh, as as you know the the, the case is a standard compressor like, like radial compressor this this kind of bend 90, 90 degrees of, of bending it's extremely suitable for periodic segment simulation because it's it's perfectly symmetric right there, there, right there, there there's no volutes uh, spirals uh, asymmetries and a lot of blades so so when we pick uh, just just uh, just a just the symmetric part and we believe that the, the flow is symmetric all circumferentially all around that that makes this case definitely very suitable uh, for 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 simulation as a periodic periodic segment, so maybe maybe some 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 
some participants could, could be confused. So, so yeah, it's this, this is the compressor and we have picked just the periodic uh, segment. Uh, another, another point I wanted to make is, yes, we use snappy hex mesh uh, meshing because it's extremely easy and extremely useful. So as long as you are fine with the simulation results, which we have here, and we will discuss them later, uh, in this webinar so as long as you're you're fine with 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 this results just you have to, to just pick snappy hex mesh because it's very easy and if you if you run an optimization loop or or some a, a lot of you know a, a lot of simulation points or you want to simulate a lot of data then it, then it's definitely easier than than manually creating meshes or or whatever so it's a robo robust automated and extremely easy and useful. So that's that's snappy hex mesh. And yes, uh, the 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 like hex hexagonal meshes can be loaded. So so we can load meshes in fluent format, in uh, in CGNS and in open form format. So you can load them directly and use them. No 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 problem at all. But the our choice number one is, is snappy hex mesh meshes because it's extremely easy and and automated and everything. It's part 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 of the package already. Okay, so that's that's the point with, with the meshes. Uh, then I wanted to ju just mention that that we have developed also these these turbo machinery specific views in Paraview. So it's special transformation of. Uh, of these two views specific for turbo machinery, uh, which is meridional view. So we 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 make all the all the quantities we wish uh, to to see. We we can we can average them like circumferentially uh, and 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 display them in the in the in the specific meridian. It shows us quite a lot, and some of our clients especially use. Uh, we wish they especially wish to to see this this plot because they 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 can see how how the how the energy the total pressure for example is being like spent or when it comes down down downwind and through the through the machine so meridional view is important for some some other clients uh it's uh this view and uh, for other clients it's important to to follow the blade to blade view which is uh, another uh, uh, another uh, trans yeah yeah making uh, <laughs> it's unwrapping of the, of the of the of the cylindrical or rounded shape into into a into a, a box and then, then you can then you can slice it from from the hub to shroud in certain certain spans and and see see how the how the stream traces meet the meet the yeah uh, the, the leading edge and then the trailing edge and especially the the point uh, at the uh, at the leading edge tells us a lot about the, the potential efficiency and and the design and everything so so for example another part of our clients want to want to see such uh, such slices and zoom them uh, with with this lic view and and see exactly if if the if the if this stagnation point is is exactly in the in the point of in in in, in exactly in the in the location of of the of the leading edge or in fact it's vice versa doesn't matter uh, it's this point and uh, yeah maybe maybe now it's time to say a little bit about the results. So, so we 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 made uh, we, we evaluated the results, which is for for, for uh, this this compressor. It's uh, definitely the total pressure ratio, which we which we plot uh, in, in in this way. And also we have we have the, here's the comparison with with the measurement. So here you can see the simulation is in the red. Uh, uh, dots and uh, uh, the measurement is black, and you, you can see how it how it uh, how it yeah compares. And uh, the, of course, the efficiency is, is quite quite uh, uh, for a discussion. So yeah, here is the comparison for for the efficiency. Uh, again, the black is the measurement, the red is is the simulation, and 
here I wanted to mention quite important thing. We we intentionally didn't tweak anything. We didn't uh, play with that uh, that much. So we we just uh, did the best settings according to our our knowledge. Around the simulation, then we look at the results. We then we edit a couple of points to 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 you know fit the, the especially the uh, the search line, and then then we left it. So there's certainly a lot of you know a lot of space to to improve that. We we on, we only wanted to show you that there's a way. Anyone can have this, and uh, it's basically a starting point for this for this for this benchmark. And we intentionally didn't tweak anything. That's that's a very important message because because we could play with it uh, much more. We could we could change so many constants everywhere, and uh, I'm sure it, the results would be better. But we intentionally wanted to keep it like raw raw data to to for you to see it. Uh, there are there are uh, on our website you can see this this case study, and also there are a couple of there are a couple of uh, papers that were published on this. You can see all the measurements, data, uh, details, and everything. So, so everything is transparent. This simulation is anytime repeatable. So we can, you can uh, take the soft other software, uh, run it, and, and you will obtain the same results. So it's absolutely transparent, absolutely clear. And uh, that's the point I wanted to make. And okay, let, let's let's see what what questions we have here. Maybe Radek, if you if you like, you can you can finish your point if, if you wish. Okay, okay, okay. I, I I see a few questions, which I can answer directly. Okay. One of one of them is what specific turbulence model is used for CFD analysis. So I think as I as I mentioned it. We use a standard K omega SST turbulence model. Yeah, so there is nothing special. And why a low Reynolds number is used when velocities are very large compared to the viscous term. So low Reynolds, it was connected to the low Reynolds fault treatment. Yeah, there, so to treatment of the turbulence boundary layer. Yeah, so so it's it's which kind of the wall functions or how to treat the turbulence quantity turbulent quantities at the wall. Yeah, and as I suggest, as I mentioned, we used eight eight boundary layers. So the y plus number goes down up to up to ten or less, for which uh, the standard wall functions are not applicable, and and the low Reynolds wall functions can <coughs> can can treat these low values or can set can set the proper values. For for the turbulent quantities at the wall, so it was connected to the low Reynolds wall functions. Yeah. Okay, right. okay, thanks, Radek. Uh, well, well, well. Yeah, you have, you have a lot of questions. So, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe one of the question is also why you use the separate domain after the impeller, which is, I guess, only this extension. So I think it was it is connected to the to the topology of the of the impeller. So the impeller in in the physical physical as a physical model ends here. So here's the rotating part, here's the stator part. Yeah. So so it, it was created to follow the yeah. rotating yeah. part so of the original not, model. Not special reason, yeah. but 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 to let it stay, like keep it static, and the the the, the orange part can 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 rotate. Yeah, it's yeah. But I think it, there will be almost no significant results if we if we join. It, we we, we, we think yeah, we think. I, I me too, me too. Uh, I, I also think that it wouldn't make a, a big difference. By the way, hi Cora. Yeah, we, we've been in touch uh, some some year ago and. Mm -hmm. And this is his question. Okay, so yeah, well, well, well uh, uh, what's uh, yeah, the, the Malinath is is asking about the, the finite element method, right? Because the, the, we also use FSI. Maybe I could I could say just just a little bit that that mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll take it back. Uh, we we also have some uh, like the, the fluid simulation we have for open foam right but we also have this uh, this structural analysis uh, which is run in calculix again open source and uh, this this structural analysis like like displacement and 
and model analysis and, and the stresses um, is is done in yeah we we, we have we, we we created uh this the fea which which includes uh the fsi module which it's it's just one way so so please don't don't misunderstand me it's just one way uh, fsi so so the the forces simulated in in fluid dynamics in, in open form are like uh like interpolated on the on the surface of, of the structure and and the, this, this, the structural analysis is is done and then then the this yeah this this way of uh this way of uh analysis is is done as well so uh it's also kind of kind of useful so it's, it's calculix and fsi module uh, uh okay oh, well well, well. I miss uh, the window with questions. Okay, it's it's here. So uh, this, yeah, it's this and it, how this. There's connected. there's a question about the centrifugal bumps. How robust will be it then? So there is yeah, we have good experience with the simulating pumps, right? So it's even I think more more simpler and and this is solution is much or not much better but it's easier but, i think but it's yeah, easier and yeah 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 there is direct i agree that the pumps, pumps for are, the pumps so. in in my opinion pumps are at least one level easier than 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 compressors because it's incompressible and incompressible flow is is it has less quantities it has less dependencies and it's easier to solve and easier to understand so centrifugal pumps are definitely uh Part, part of it uh, and the, the second question from Corey is uh, uh, how can the small differences in the results with respect to experiments be uh, eliminated for perfect matching uh, well uh, it, yeah it's, it's always a big big discussion right uh, I, I had it last week a big big discussion about this with, with in another project it's this, this is what we have and uh I, I don't i don't think it's it's we have to we have to definitely come closer because uh you know how uh this the, okay the, these are quite some differences so i would like now i would like to see what can we do with uh some other meshes the different types of meshes i, I i'll be curious and it, it's on the way by the way <laughs> and uh, we, we we will do it but of course also also the measurement has uh has uh, an error and it it might be huge right because for example you know this is a facility nothing is perfect uh there are so many indirect quantities you know the velocity is measured with with with, with probes uh, elves, elves, somewhere and it's it's always local right it's not those are not integrals because cfd solves everything everywhere this is just a local measurements corrections optimizing things and uh it's it's a mess i i only mean that that even the measurement is is a mess and and uh, if you know this, this old engineering joke uh, uh, nobody trusts the, the simulation but the one who, who made it and everybody trusts the the, the measurements uh, but but the one who made it right because it's it's also also a mess so, so i don't think we 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 definitely we, we 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 must come closer but i i would be definitely interested if if we changed uh made some, some sensitivities on, on some parameters so, for example, turbulence can be changed. Definitely, the mesh, the mesh can be changed, and uh, uh, the, the numerical schemes can be changed, and also the solver, right, Radek, the solver, and and some terms in the, yeah, in, the, in, the yeah. in the equations, and the discretization terms can be changed. So it's it's a game, and it's CFD is not a calculator. It's a, it's a it's it's a craft, and and it's it's always about how much effort you you are willing to spend on it and how, how how much you 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 how much time you have and the resources and everything so that's that's definitely this uh, okay Radek, can you can you see some other questions oh, hoo, hoo. 
Now, now the last question, uh, I mean, the, 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 the latest question, which comes from Bistrik. Hello, Bistrik. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, can you imagine pump simulation with suction with from free water, for free water level? Uh, uh, yes, we can imagine it. It is possible, but yeah. it's, we, we don't recommend it. We, we don't recommend it because the, the okay, the, the multi-phase simulations are always uh, bringing uh, so much modeling and so much extra error that that I wouldn't recommend it. It's it it is possible uh, either either like some some kind of mixed solver of of, of for example Interform uh, and and this this uh, simple form family, but but I would not mix it because it's it's a quite big quite takes time and a lot of resources, big project. But yes, it's possible with, with Interform, it's, it's possible. Yeah, it's, but it will be definitely yeah, yeah, a but, very big, yeah, big project. Yeah. But the CAE now has no applic direct application for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. not, not, not in CAE. It must be developed in yeah. the future, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think it's, time is passing very quickly. I think, I think it's time to, to conclude. Uh, so this has been the Q and A. We will we will look through the questions and answer those we we didn't answer here. So that's it, and it will be very it, right? Because these these are a couple of those who already share our visions with us. So you are very welcome to join our our family because we are running we are run as a family business. We never left behind anyone, and we we uh, clients. Our clients' problems are also our problems, and and you can feel it when when you when you work with us. And uh, I think this would be really it. Uh, Radek, yeah. uh, Maybe we can show our faces again just to yeah, say yes, goodbye. Exactly. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> of course we can. Of course we can. I hope I'm coming. Hello, 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 yeah. everyone, and uh, goodbye. Actually, right? It's, yeah. it's goodbye. It's not hello. Yeah. It was so, great to meet you here. Right. Thank you. Thank you for it, and we will. We are always open for discussion, for for the messages from you, for some visions and projects for tomorrow, for the next day, for the future. So, thank you for coming, and I hope we will stay in touch. Thank you. And exactly. Yeah, yeah. This this take is care it. of uh, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> sure. In these dynamic times we are living in, right? So, okay, thank you for coming. Let's keep in touch. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for staying with us and let's keep in touch. And bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes, this will be really, yeah.